Hello, star people. Welcome back to Earth Sky. I'm Deborah Bird. This weekend on January 10th, Earth will fly between the sun and the giant planet Jupiter. Jupiter will be in opposition to the sun or opposite the sun in space and in our sky. This animation shows an opposition of Jupiter in the year 2017. This year, it'll happen on January 10th, 2026. And so this month for all of Earth, Jupiter is opposite the sun, ascending in the east after the sun has set in the west and highest up at midnight when the sun is below our feet. It's in the company of many bright stars in our Milky Way galaxy. And I want you guys to hang on for one second here because I'm worried that my microphone is not hooked up. Hmm, 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 hmm. Okay, well, it's just gonna be what it is. I hope you guys can hear me. <laughs> um, Everyone can hear you, you're good. Awesome, okay, good. Jupiter is brighter than any star in the January night sky. Uh, and today we're going to step out into space and think about the Sun, Earth, Jupiter alignment, how often it happens, why Jupiter appears brightest now, and most importantly, what you can expect to see. So stay with us. And plus, I'm going to be sticking around at the end to answer your questions. <laughs> I'm much better on astronomy than I am on uh, live stream technical stuff. Uh, so if you have a question, please add it to the comments box. And while you're at it, we'd love it if you would hit the subscribe button. Okay, so what we're seeing here is a close-up look at Jupiter's current location in our sky. It's in front of the constellation Gemini the Twins. Uh, and as we saw on the previous chart, Jupiter is among many bright stars. But it's near two bright stars that are recognizable for being bright and close together in the sky. They are Castor and Pollux in the constellation Gemini the Twins. Castor and Pollux are bright, but they're no match for mighty Jupiter. And Jupiter is one of two planets in the evening sky now. The other one is fainter Saturn. And as always on our charts, that green line is the sun's path across your sky. So always look for planets along the sun's path. And I'm not gonna talk here about looking at Jupiter through a telescope, but January uh, and February, 2026, are great times to do that. We'll touch on that in a future Earth Sky live stream. And we'll also talk in that future live stream uh, in more depth about seeing Jupiter's moons. Just know that you might enjoy aiming any ordinary binoculars that you have lying around your house uh, at that very bright object in the night sky now, Jupiter. And if you do that, you might glimpse a moon or two. Through binoculars, the moons look like little stars near the planet. And just remember, Jupiter really is a giant world more than a thousand Earths could fit inside of it. It's the biggest planet in our solar system, a mighty world. We sometimes used to hear Jupiter called a failed star, but it's not really even that. You'd need 80 planet Jupiters rolled into a ball to be massive enough to spark hydrogen fusion reactions, the process that enables stars to shine. And still, it's fun to think about what it would be like right now if Jupiter were a second sun in our solar system. If Jupiter were a star, instead of seeing it rise in the east among all of these other bright stars, uh, it would be bright enough to give us a lesser form of daylight, thousands of times brighter than a full moon, but dimmer than our sun all night long in January 2026. So Jupiter isn't a second sun. It doesn't generate its own light in its interior uh, via hydrogen fusion reactions. Like Earth, Jupiter shines mostly with reflected sunlight. It has a day side and a night side. 
So why does Jupiter look brightest at opposition? It's because it's closest to us this month. And if you care about a number, Jupiter's magnitude right now is minus 2.7. That's really bright. Jupiter is brightest for many weeks around the time we go between this outer planet and the sun, as we will on January 10th. In fact, Jupiter is brighter than any other star-like object in the night sky now. And that's especially true since Venus, which is normally the brightest planet, is now behind the sun. This image is from yesterday, January 6th. Uh, Mars is also behind the sun now. Uh, and this image is from NASA's sun-observing SOHO spacecraft. So Jupiter comes to opposition about every 13 months. Its last opposition was December 2024, and that's the larger image on the right here. The one on the left was from a few months earlier, September 2024. Uh, an Earth Sky community member, or let me just say, because sometimes I the screen will flip here in a way that I'm not used to. The bigger image is from when Jupiter was in opposition. The smaller image is from several months earlier. Uh, and an Earth Sky community member, Nishat Khan in Ontario, shared these images. So thank you, Nishat. Jupiter takes 12 years to orbit the sun and Earth takes one year. So here we are, 13 months from Jupiter's last opposition in December, 2024. And Jupiter is once again, right on schedule, bigger and brighter in our night sky. And I love this beautiful animation by Tony Dunn. Tony, thank you for letting us show it. Uh, it's just a reminder that everything in space is always moving. The sun is moving through the galaxy and the planets are moving around the sun. Opposition is an alignment of the sun, Earth and Jupiter. But because the planets move on curved paths around the sun, the moment of perfect alignment isn't necessarily the moment of closest distance. So Jupiter isn't exactly closest to us on the day of opposition, January 10th. At this 2026 opposition, Jupiter is closest on January 9th, just one day before opposition at 393 million miles, or 633 million kilometers away. That translates to 35 light minutes. So think about a spacecraft orbiting Jupiter now. The Juno spacecraft has been orbiting Jupiter since July 4th of 2016. And a radio transmission from Juno takes its least amount of time to reach us now, 35 minutes. More about, Jupo, more about Juno coming up. And now, a quick look back at the year 2020 to the great conjunction of Jupiter and Saturn. Uh, another Earth Sky community member, Vega Star C of Liard Photography in France, captured this image during the 2020 Great Conjunction. Thank you, Vega Star. Uh, and that conjunction was called Great because Jupiter and Saturn are the two biggest planets in our solar system. And again, a single orbit for Jupiter takes about 12 years, uh, but a single orbit for Saturn takes 30 years. And we saw Jupiter and Saturn together in our sky in 2020 because that was the year that Jupiter passed Saturn on the inside track around the sun. And that's something it does only every 20 years. So now in the January 2026 evening sky, you can still see Jupiter and Saturn together but now Jupiter has pulled far ahead of Saturn in the race of the planets around the sun. So it's half a sky away from Saturn now. The great conjunction of 2020 was exciting. It was very cool to see. And our earliest ancestors must have seen Jupiter and Saturn come together in the night sky, just as we do like clockwork every 20 years. Although for most of human history, Jupiter was just a blazing dot of light. But I love to remember that when I first started writing about astronomy in the 1970s, all we had were these blurry telescopic views of Jupiter. And then in 1974, the Pioneer spacecraft became the first 
whose trajectories would carry them out of our solar system. They use Jupiter's gravity as a slingshot to gain speed. And finally, in the late 1970s, the more sophisticated Voyager spacecraft flew past Jupiter. The Voyagers revealed Jupiter as a place, a world with its own weather, storms, and complexity. They found active volcanoes on Jupiter's moon Io. These discoveries were stunning, but other spacecraft found more. Galileo was the first to orbit Jupiter and the first to deploy a probe into its atmosphere. And the real thought revolution came with Galileo's findings about Jupiter's moons. Many are active and some are potentially habitable. And now there's Juno, the craft I mentioned earlier, orbiting Jupiter since 2016. It flies directly over Jupiter's north and south poles. Uh, Juno found this geometric pattern of giant cyclones at each Jupiter pole. Each one of these cyclones is thousands of miles wide. The cyclones form stable patterns. They circle a central storm, uh, a multiple cyclone structure, unlike anything seen on Earth. So when you step outside this month and see Jupiter glowing in the night sky at its closest and brightest for this whole year, uh, know that that dot that you're seeing is the same mighty world that our ancestors saw, uh, one that's been transformed for us by our spacecraft from a dot into a destination. And I see there are several of you here and I'd like to open things up for questions. So if you have a question, we'd love to try to answer it. Um, please type it into the comments. Um, in the meantime, a quick update on Juno. Its official extended mission ended in September, 2025. The original plan was for the spacecraft to make a final plunge back into Jupiter's thick atmosphere to close out the mission, but we still don't know if that will happen. Uh, NASA hasn't updated Juno's flight log since the U.S. government shutdown from October 1 to November 12 in 2025. There's a link to the flight log in the post notes uh, on, on YouTube. And as for NASA's uh, 2026 budget, the funding has been uncertain. The White House proposed major cuts to NASA's science budget last September, but it's Congress that has the constitutional job of setting the federal budget. And on Monday, two days ago, Congress stepped in and put any preliminary space mission closeout plans on hold while a new funding plan is worked out. So the deadline for that is January 30th. Um, that date marks the end of the continuing resolution that's in effect now to keep NASA and much of the U.S. government uh, running. A January 5th article in Ars Technica reports on the latest NASA budget, and you'll find that link in the post notes as well. Diana Hadley, hi. <laughs> Not a question. Every time I look at Jupiter through binoculars, I ponder what Galileo uh, would have uh, given to have such an instrument in his hands and how he, oh, that's cut off, Galileo, yes. So Diana, hello again. And yeah, so Galileo uh, was one of the early telescope makers and he was one of the first to look at Jupiter through a telescope. And at that time, people thought that Earth was in the center of the universe. Uh, but then Galileo used one of those very early telescopes. He looked up and he saw that there were these little dots of light that I mentioned circling around Jupiter. So suddenly people realized that Earth wasn't the center of everything. <laughs> there was something up in, in, in the heavens that was being orbited. So uh, that started a revolution of thought that had, you know, led led to the scientific revolution and led to where we are today. So, you know, awesome thought, Diana. Thank you. Um, I have another question that somebody asked by email earlier today, and that is, what is the best time uh, and date to observe Jupiter? Is it the night of January 9th, the date of closest approach, 
or is it January 10th, the date of closest alignment, uh, or is it the morning of January 11th? And the answer is, no matter what day you're seeing this, the best night is tonight. <laughs> so I saw Jupiter last night from my back deck in a downtown super urban location. I live right in the middle of a big city. And wow, Jupiter is so bright. So UFO reports are sure to increase this month. Uh, and don't worry about those exact times. Just go out there in January, 2026 and look for the brightest star-like object up there and that'll be Jupiter. Okay, so no more questions. Maybe next time uh, we're, we're here, we at Earth Sky are here to help. And we thank you all for watching. Uh, we're wishing you clear skies, one Earth, one sky, Earth Sky.